If you have followed my projects, you may know that I made the Cylon Eye a couple of years ago. However, since that time, I've had a lot of issues with it. Namely, the eye would only last a few weeks in the RV. I would test the new eye for six months in the lab without failure. But then, when I put the eye in the RV, it would only last a month or so. I became so frustrated that last summer, I no longer recommended building the Cylon Eye and put a notice on the website as to the issues that I encountered. Happily though, I think I've solved the problem. I built a new eye last August with a few changes, and since then, after nearly 5,000 miles of towing the RV on everything from bad highways, in the driven wind and rain, and then storing it in freezing winter temperatures with a foot of snow in the RV, it's not failed. So, with guarded optimism, I am releasing this update video and the updated project webpage. What I am calling the Cylon Eye is a 9 segment LED strip at the nose of the RV. It originally came from the factory as a white LED strip and it was used as a courtesy light when hitching up at night. However, the clear plastic in the original LED strip faded within a year, so I decided to replace it. But in RV project fashion, I not only replaced it, I modified it. The Cylon Eye has three functions as compared to the original LED strip. First, it retains the white LED hitch up light. Second, it includes an accelerometer which allows it to behave like a spirit level in much the same way as the hitch mounted level below it. Third, and this is where the Cylon Eye part applies, it provides illumination so you don't bash your head into the pin box as you walk by at night. The Cylon Eye term comes from the Knight Rider kit effect that was also in the old Battlestar Galactical television series, and I like the more nefarious sounding title of Cylon Eye rather than Kit Eye. A full demonstration of the functions can be viewed on the Cylon Eye videos of the original project or the project webpage, and I'm providing a link here for that webpage. From my analysis, the problem is either one of two areas, or maybe even both. And one thing I noticed is that usually the last two or three of these LEDs are the ones that were burning out, and that made me a little suspicious. Now these LEDs are daisy chained, so the input actually goes into the first LED, and then there is an output of the first LED that goes to the second one, and then an output of the second one to the third one, and so on, all the way down the line. So they're not parallel, they're actually in series as far as the signal goes, although the power lines are parallel. Although the data sheet for the LEDs did not recommend it, I added an end of string terminator here by terminating both the power line and the data line with a resistor as well as with a TVS diode, so I'm hoping that if there's any transients that are generated that are burning out the ends of the diodes, that will take care of the problem. The other possible issue is this may be leaking a little bit. In last year I found some black flexible epoxy potting compound. Typically potting compound is made epoxy of course, so it's rigid, where this stuff is more flexible. And so I mixed them up in a syringe and I ran it all the way around the little channel here between all of the lights. And even though there's epoxy on here, it is somewhat flexible because when you put it on the RV, it's going to be bent just a little bit. So I'm not sure whether it was a leak issue or a transient voltage issue or a combination of both. I just went ahead and did both. And the only parts that are different are here, which is the end of string. And you may notice, if you've followed my project from the very beginning, to save money, I actually build it in three equal circuit boards. You put the circuit boards together. Well, I abandoned that approach because I need to make sure this is waterproofed. And in fact, after we're done building the board, and we put the board into the slot here, I'm going to fill that full of this flexible epoxy as well. So it's going to be as sealed as sealed can get. I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step video on putting these uh, components in because if you go to my webpage, 
uh, on the project, there will be instructions on how to do the step-by-step, -step, and so it's fairly straightforward. And now we have uh, all the components soldered to the board and the connector on the river side. So the prudent thing to do is to test it before we put the potting compound in and seal it. And I just plug it in. Then we'll turn it on. So it's working. And if you remember from my original video, when you get these, they have a strip in them already that is just white. And when you remove the strip, you know, you're not going to get all the flash and all the glue off, but that's okay. When you put these in, they'll go either way. You can put them in this way or that way. It used to be a little harder, but then I adjusted the dimensions a little bit, and I put little notches in the corner, which seemed to really help a lot. And you, you can just uh, put them under one lip, basically, and then they should just kind of snap in. And then what I like to do is take some of this conformal coating, run a bead around the outside, and this isn't going to really waterproof it that well, but what it will do is it will prevent the epoxy from leaking down inside the device. Because with the epoxy, if there's any kind of a gap at all, it's going to find it. Doing this will just help you know, kind of keep the epoxy on the outside where it belongs. So you can take your time and stir this, and the more you get it uh, mixed up, you know, the better it's going to work. And when we pour this, we want it to be on a flat surface, as flat as we can get it, and some place where we aren't going to disturb it for a while. And we'll just kind of run a bead through here. Try not to get any on the connector itself. And then kind of let it find its own level a little bit. And we're about now 24 hours after the initial pour. And it's still just slightly tacky. This stuff takes a lot longer than the uh, standard style potting compound. And, you know, two or three days is what it's going to take. You can still bend it slightly. And that's why I went with the flexible potting compound. Because, again, there is a slight bend in the front of the RV. And with guarded optimism... They should uh, not fail like the other ones did. And soon I will be updating the driver board, which you may have seen in the first part of the video. And the difference between this board and the original one is that I'm using a potting compound on here on the potting box. I saved a lot of money in not having to make any front panels and things on the original chassis. And I also want to add remote control to this. So if you build a Cylon Eye, the original one will work. Or later this year, if you've not built one, then I'll have one available that will include an option for remote control.